Okay, well, thanks everybody for joining. Really excited to be able to share our project with you tonight. Um, we're here in the Eisenhives apiary. You can see behind us, we've got a few of the units and some live bees. So uh, hopefully they'll enjoy listening in as well. If not, I might uh, get a nice bee sting on the, uh, on the face. <laughs> okay, well, I wanted to kick this off and, and really sort of share a little bit of why we're doing this before we really get into uh, too many of the details about Eisenhives itself. And so I've got a bit of a presentation that I'm looking forward to sharing parts of. And yep, here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'll walk through a couple of, uh, couple of the details that are pretty important for how this project really got started. So as you can see here, um, you know, the mission of Keltronics is really to accelerate the transition to sustainable agriculture. And we really became fascinated and curious about what we could do um, to better understand bees. So what you can see uh, here is just a couple of the, the high level kind of outlines that we think are really important for why we care about this. And you know, at a high level, there's a third of our food which depends on bee pollination. Um, Last year, I think it even went up to 44%, but in 2014, um, you know, 42% of bee colonies in the United States actually failed. And so there are many reasons behind that, but that really is something that, you know, before 2006, it was almost unheard of to have anywhere near that number of bees, um, bee colonies fail. So really in the last 10 years, there's been a dramatic increase in sort of bee mortality and Obviously, everybody's now aware that the bees are in trouble. One of the other things that we thought was really fascinating um, in this kind of understanding why is that it's really two weeks. Um, it's sort of one of the common sort of time frames for a beekeeper to inspect their hive. Um, so what we really started to understand is that many beekeepers may actually lack visibility into you know, what's happened between a healthy hive and then two weeks later finding that the hive has in fact failed. So my name's Kelton. Um, my team and I have been really sort of considering this amazing, um, you know, a third of our food depending on bees and just this lack of visibility for the last couple of years. And we were inspired um, in part by, <laughs> it's kind of funny, I actually had a, uh, a a swarm of bees made their home in the garage wall behind me here. And I, uh, I'd grown up with my father and grandfather being beekeepers, but really reached out to some local uh, beekeepers in town in Santa Barbara here and um, found out that not only um, urban beekeeping was very much, uh, you know, there was a movement around urban beekeeping, but it was also something that in this city was very much supported. So. Um, John Simpson, my co-founder, and I um, of Keltronics and this Eisenhives project, we actually rescued that uh, bee colony out of the wall and, and gave them a home here in the backyard. And, you know, at that point, becoming a beekeeper, and it's just amazing to have these, you know, these creatures that other people might think are sort of terrifying, like 20,000 stinging insects, what can possibly go wrong? but really fell in love with bees and just the sense of connecting with, you know, your environment and there's a bit of a backyard organic garden here behind me. Um, obviously, you know, there's a lot of food that you can grow more effectively with bees, but it's just the sense of, of and joy of being able to keep bees and be a custodian of their existence that um, really inspired a lot of passion in, in our team. So the next step for us, um, for me in particular, I had a, a mentor here in town, Paul Cronshaw. I'm very excited that he's tuned in today. And the first thing that Paul, um, my first real interaction with him after doing a few swarm rescues around town and just helping out the association was, um, Paul asked me to check on a hive in town. And he asked, you know, could you count the number of bees flying out of that hive and, you know, just tell me how many are flying out in a minute, and that might give me a sense of the, you know, the health of that hive. And so I thought that was really fascinating, um, partly because my background is in um, robotics and healthcare, and a big, big change in that industry is, 
this understanding that we can actually measure things and you, know, you might measure somebody's heart rate um, for many weeks and, and identify whether or not they have any irregularities rather than you know just sort of see them having a heart attack and then wondering why. So healthcare has really known that measuring, getting some data, being able to better understand you know, whether there is a problem is a really good approach. And I was just inspired by this idea that a beekeeper who's been beekeeping here for 40 years um, sort of was thinking in terms of data. But it was a bit of a manual thing to sit in front of a hive. And you know, I've got a few hives back there. I started counting for each of those hives um, every week and getting this sense that you know, maybe there's something to this. But as you can imagine, you know, sitting in front of a hive all day every day while having a job is not feasible at all. Um, and it would be much, much better if there was some way to you know, build a robot or some sort of bot that could actually do that task for us. Um, so that was really the, that's why we started thinking about this. It's like the bees are in trouble. There's an idea of how we can maybe measure their health and can we possibly build a tool that can enable any beekeeper um, to be able to effectively have you know, that human perception service of counting bees flying in front of these beehives all day every day rather than you know, the one or, one or two minutes that we could maybe spend um, looking at a beehive while we're having a coffee in the morning. So that was a challenge. Um, being a team of engineers, we love challenges and we thought this is a really cool problem. Um, we might be able to really help out here, depending on what we can do with that data, but can we even measure anything that matters? Um, so we formed a team and we got a, a, a group together, we started tackling this and sure enough it turned out that yes, we could actually measure um, not only the bee flight, um, but we could actually also measure like how long the bees were, were hanging around in front of the hive. So that was our, you know, I mean, it was just amazing at first to be able to measure anything. And once we started measuring these signals, we're actually able to develop sort of what a hive looks like over a day. Um, so I'm going to briefly sort of show you a, a quick picture of that um, by going into the app here. Here I am, I'm actually jumping into... Um, our Eyes and Hives app, and so uh, you can see right now I'm actually looking at one of the hives behind me. And this is really where things became incredibly fascinating. Not only is there um, a, a pattern that we can pick up and a signal that we can measure all day, you know, we've got it 7 a.m., here's what the bees look like, I can click a button, press play, not much activity there, just a couple of early bees heading out and, and seeing what the day can bring. But what you can really see is that there's this whole pattern, and in particular, this big spike during the later part of the day. And we asked a couple of beekeepers, you know, what do you think that spike means? Um, we beekeep here ourselves, and so pretty quickly we figured out that, you know, it's, it's pretty likely that that spike is in fact the orientation spike. That's when our baby bees are coming outside of the hive and actually uh, taking their first flights. And it turns out we get that spike because, you know, as, as most beekeepers will know, they're not just flying in front of the hive, um, you know, sorry, they're not just flying out of the hive, they're actually hovering in front of the hive as they really learn where they are in the world. So you get this behavior pattern of orientation bees, um, which are really sort of, they're hovering in front of the hive and um, it turned out that our algorithm that we're able to develop can really pick out you know, what's happening in front of the hive in addition to sort of what's flying out. So we've really got this field of view, this kind of a, a, a sort of a prism coming out from the, uh, the Eisenhives device, which is able to measure bee flight activity in that sort of, it's just like when we look in front of us, we've got that vision. That's exactly what the, the device is doing and it's counting bee activity in that space. So once we had that, um, we were seeing this spike and we thought, wow, that's fascinating. Um, it turned out that the hives which had that spike have a healthy queen. And, you know, the reasoning behind that is that you only get a spike in activity with orientating bees when there are baby bees that are sort of graduating to become field bees. And so you can imagine that, well, in order to have baby bees, you've got a queen that must have been laying, you know, a couple of weeks beforehand in order to, to have these new bees, you know, graduating the hive. 
Um, but then we thought, well, okay, what does an unhealthy hive look like? Like, does it look different? Is there anything to that? So I know right now that, uh, that Mike's hive is not doing so well. So I'm going to open up Mike's hive. And in fact, instead of seeing that big orientation spike, I've just got a bit of a sort of a scattered activity here. Um, you know, there might have been a few hive, few bees active here. You can see we've actually got a cool lizard there. But really, the activity in this hive, there's, there's really almost nothing. Um, you can see maybe there will be a couple of bees coming. Yep, there's one flying by. But really, we're not seeing the same kind of activity pattern. Here we are back in the unhealthy hive. And when we look at what happens to that hive over time, this is where the story really becomes clear. We can see that a hive um, that's unhealthy, you'll actually see a, a pretty dramatic trend. And so this trend line of not only what is it doing for today, and does it have that same pattern with that spike, but what is it actually doing over the last month? You can see in this case, um, Mike's hive has really gone downhill, so um, we're able to really identify and quantify what does it mean for a hive to become unhealthy, and what does it actually mean, you know, when the hive becomes unhealthy, what, what are the signals that we're able to measure? And it turned out that that orientation pattern was the key. Once we saw a hive with that big spike, it turned out that you know, we'd inspect that hive and find a healthy queen, often a really good brood pattern. Um, when we'd see a hive that had, you know, sort of activity all over the place or no real clean signal, um, that was like a, a, really key, a really key and clear indicator that something might be wrong. So we've now been doing this for the last sort of two and a half, well, not quite two and a half years, but around about two years now since we started the project. Um, you know, the inception of it with measuring the, the hive data manually to now having this fully automated system. And what we've seen over that time is not only we can actually put this device, you know, you can see some of the devices over there. Um, let me just grab one from, I've put it somewhere else. Anyways, you can see some of the devices back there um, working right now. Once we put one of those in front of a device, as a beekeeper, I can see, you know, what is my orientation activity? Um, after a couple of days, I can see, you know, is my hive growing or is it in decline? And I can really begin to, to collaborate and share. So my good friend, Mike, who, you know, I met through this project, um, we can now collaborate remotely and, and, you know, using the application, we're able to better close the loop. And we have a community of beekeepers now who, um, using the application, are able to share ideas and, and, and really not only provide a support network for each other, but provide a mentoring network. So we love this idea that, you know, this system can help a beekeeper understand the, the health of their own hives. It can also enable a beekeeping community to have um, sort of a shared understanding of their local hive conditions, their local bee conditions, and really be a way to um, project your voice and enable you know, many other people to be able to, you know, benefit from that shared visibility and understanding. So that was really, really exciting when we started kicking off. Um, early last year, we started out with the, the local beta. So we had a bunch of people in Santa Barbara uh, through the Beekeepers Guild of Santa Barbara and the Santa Barbara Beekeepers Association and some other just good people that were really excited by this whole idea. Um, they joined the platform. Um, we're able to see that in our local community, um, robbing was one of the things that would actually affect the health in a material way of our beehives. And that turned out to have a different activity pattern. We've got a few blog posts where you're able to see that. Um, but basically, instead of having that nice spike in the middle of the day with the orientation activity, you've got sort of like a big ramp up and a, a longer ramp down. And once you click on the video, you're able to see, yes, my hive is being robbed, and I should do something about that. Um, we're able to detect swarming. So earlier in this year, we came through a uh, pretty quiet winter for most of the bees. Um, and then we saw most of the <laughs> many of the monitored hives at least, um, where a beekeeper hadn't checkerboarded the hive to prevent swarming, we actually saw that um, there were a lot of hives that had a very distinct um, swarming activity pattern. And that turned out to be a big spike. It was about triple the orientation spike and it happened early in the morning. Um, you know, typically around 10 in the morning or you know, before midday typically. And so that was really exciting because that was another activity pattern which you know, we could now pick up. It was real data and a real you know, 
know, a real pattern for us to be able to train the system to learn. So beekeepers are able to identify this stuff pretty easily. Um, we've got a plane flying overhead, so you can tell it's live. Um, but yeah, beekeepers are, are very much able to look at the pattern and see that you know something isn't normal. A normal day should have that orientation activity. Anything other than normal, a beekeeper can look at that and immediately say, okay, what's going on? Maybe I need to inspect today and get ahead of it before it becomes you know, an actual issue. So when we think back to the opening, it was, you know, a third of our food depends on bees. You know, for California, 15 billion in agriculture is dependent on commercial bee pollination. Um, and really the, the thing that struck us, you know, with so many beehives dying and this idea that, you know, most beekeepers would inspect maybe once a week or once every two weeks more likely, so you're not disturbing the bees as much. We really, we've, we've changed that whole paradigm. We've changed it so now you can actually see, is my hive healthy or is my hive at least doing the same thing that it was yesterday? And you can check every day. You can see the videos, you can see the data, and that's been really powerful. It turned out that you know, if, if nothing else out of this project, that was a huge breakthrough. We're really proud of that and really excited about what that means. But then taking that a step further, you can now see that um, we're, we're able to see these other patterns. We're able to see that, yes, this is swarming, this is robbing, this is orientation. Um, so for us, where we're going with this is we now have this diagnostic tool and um, this capability for beekeepers to really see, you know, what's happening with my bees? What can I learn from my bees? As you know, and I said earlier, we have this whole team of engineers who love this stuff. We love data and we come from a healthcare sort of data background. And so now what we're doing is we're thinking about that and we're saying, well, let's train the computer to be able to understand what robbing and what swarming and what orientation activity is as well. So our first step was, you know, being able to send out alerts that, you know, here's a level of activity that is out of the norm or above a threshold. And you might want to check in on the video and see what your hive is doing. Um, but for us, our future state really is um, we want for every beekeeper who wants to connect their hive up to the system to not only be able to you know, use the platform to see their own hive and other people's hives, but we want the platform to be able to learn about bee health um, from an algorithmic point of view. So the idea is that we've, we've got all this data that we can create to better understand bee health and in, you know, for all those commercial beekeepers, for backyard beekeepers, we're really building up this data set which will enable us all as sort of citizen scientists to help answer some of the questions of, you know, what happened between this healthy hive two weeks ago and this colony that, you know, has failed or has collapsed or, you know, whatever question we want to ask, we've now got the tools to be able to do it. So that's a really big deal for us. It's really exciting. Um, we started sharing sort of this whole vision that we have and this belief that we can actually, through data and measuring what's wrong um, and putting you know, the right people in front of that data, maybe answer the question for you know, how can we help save the bees? And so, yeah, we're making progress. That's sort of the, the current state of things. Um, we had a Kickstarter campaign that went pretty well. We're pretty excited. You know, a lot of skeptics <laughs> just sort of not even believing that it was possible to measure bee flight activity like this. Um, so we showed, you know, we showed the algorithm, we showed how it worked and picking out the individual bees and, and sharing that. Um, but yeah, now we're, we really do have a community of beekeepers that are connected to each other and connected with their bees. Um, looking every day at the data, looking at their bees through video and then heading into their own backyard and, and doing an inspection and checking up on, on what's happened. Um, so what's coming? First of all, we're uh, pretty excited to be able to share that we're back on Indiegogo and we've now got our own website so more people are able to get this. Um, we limited it at first to just people in our own backyard, Santa Barbara. Um, we then got to the stage of uh, opening it up for US people. We have some wonderful folks out in uh, Canada um, who are starting to use the system as well. Um, but now we've, we've actually started building up our production capabilities and. We're going to be able to make this device available for a lot more people. 
Um, so that's pretty cool. We're, we're launching the website, and that's going well. Um, we're obviously doing outreach and some education sessions. We want to be able to do these sort of live webcasts, um, focusing on more specific topics rather than sort of the general overview that I just gave then. Um, but you know, that's one of the sort of the pieces where we currently are, and where we're going is building out those algorithmic capabilities to to better enable um, really the platform to to learn from the bees. We're trying to teach the computer how to understand bee health. And so beekeepers are able to, to build that out. So this year, we're really focused on developing the algorithms. Um, we're also pretty excited. Um, there's a few things I can't share yet, um, but they're in the works. Um, one of them I'm really looking forward to in the next couple of months, we'll be showing you um, a collaboration with a local wood sculptor. Um, whose name is Koji Tanaka. You can look up his work online, and you'll see what he's uh, what he creates. Um, but we really believe in sustainability and how can we engineer a sustainable device. Um, so we're looking at changing some of the design elements of the device to really reflect that you know we care about the environment, we care about helping the bees, and we want to build our devices in a way that you know that reflects our values there. So. I'm pretty excited to be able to share some of that. Um, I can't share any sort of visuals of that just yet, but we're going to be announcing that in a couple of months from now. Um, other projects for us, we're doing a lot of outreach with schools. Um, we have a big program coming up in August um, where we are going to be asking for nonprofit organizations and schools, um, basically anybody who uh, believes that they can use this type of system in a you know, in an educational and sort of um, you know, in a positive way, really. Um, we want to open it up and basically we have a set of people who have um, sort of hive sponsors. So we're excited to pair up um, people who wanted to bring the system out into the world and give it to good organizations who, you know, can either benefit from the data directly or have an education-based mission um, that you know, they can use this to help. So whether it's teaching science to kids who are interested in, um, you know, teaching kids how to graph things and how to study data, um, sort of the, the STEM skill set, and also um, beekeeping associations who have an education mission. So, you know, here's what happened to this hive that maybe have has a varroa issue. Here's what happens to the pattern. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, we'll be sharing more details about how to apply for that program. But we want to get the word out there that you know, a big part of what we want to do is um, enable other organizations which have a, a great mission around education and, and you know, beekeeping awareness to be able to partner with us and partner with some of our, our donors and sponsors. So that's pretty exciting for us. Um, going into next year, we've begun to partner with some of the um, commercial beekeeping organizations. So those are often a family business. Um, many of the commercial beekeepers in the last sort of 10 years have actually gone out of business because of the level of, of bee colony loss. And so we're starting to ask the question, okay, we've done this um, partnership with backyard urban beekeepers trying to figure out can we measure bee health? And now we want to really ask the question, okay, we can measure bee health, we, we are measuring bee health, how can we enable this to, to have the big impact in our food system? How can we work with those family-owned, multi-generational beekeeping um, businesses that you know, are worried that they won't be able to be around for the next generation because their bees are dying? So um, that's a big sort of focus for us going into next year. And as a company, um, we've got, uh, so Nicholas Cunningham's one of the uh, wonderful members of the company. He's actually setting up an operation out in uh, in Oregon, where we'll be manufacturing these devices, and so we're very excited to be growing as a company. Um, we're going to be looking for you know, sort of mentoring and help from our community, and so we'll be sort of putting that out there that you know, we're looking to try and grow as a company and, and sort of uh, grow as individuals in this space. And you know, it's really the opportunity to work on something as important as this. Um, you know, we think in, in 2016, why not? Why can't we actually build a company that its mission is around sustainable agriculture? Um, we're focused on bringing people who have the right skill sets to actually solve 
potentially solve a, a really important problem around you know, keeping bees alive. So that's a little bit of a taste of, uh, apologize for the Santa Barbara Airport here, but that's a little bit of a taste of, of who we are, what the project's all about, and where we're going over the next year um, with Eyes on Hives. So I really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, there's a, I'm going to be checking on some of the comments for the question and answer session. And um, thank you for many of the respondents on, uh, on our SurveyMonkey um, questionnaire. I can see there's a, a bunch of them have come in now. And so uh, I wanted to sort of wrap up the, the basic presentation here and start looking at some of the question and answer um, that have come up. And uh, thank, you, uh, thank you, Stuart. I'm going to take your question first. I can see uh, you know, if you're in the, the live cast right now, Please just comment in, in that comment box and be happy to answer the questions. So Stuart asks, um, well, it says, very cool. Thank you. Um, any idea of your timeline of production on units? So right now, we've, we've made very limited units available. We're actually, we've been shipping around one of them a week um, to our Indiegogo backers. So if you wish to check out Indiegogo, I think the link is at least on our website. Um, there are a couple of sort of a small um, number of units that we will be shipping in July. Um, so please do check that out. Um, we are shipping in limited quantities right now. Um, so yeah, probably if you put in an order two weeks from now, you should be getting a, a note that we've shipped it out. We're sort of building to order. Um, but yes, we are building and shipping right now. So thanks for that question, Stuart. And uh, let's see, Paul's shared a few things. Yes, Paul, we are live. <laughs> thanks for, uh, for commenting on that. Um, I'm going to jump into some of the Survey Monkey questions. And so uh, it was wonderful, by the way, to see that lots of the people who tuned in um, you know, are familiar with the project and you know, have supported us for, for some time now. So thank you very much. We, we really do appreciate it. Um, There's a bit of a, a toss up between this time and midday. So anyways, we're going to probably pick the evening times for these going forward. So I apologize to anybody who couldn't tune in. Um, so one of the first uh, one of the first questions that somebody sent in, um, I can't actually see who sent it in, so I apologize, anonymous uh, supporter who sent that in. Um, you said, why did you start Eyes on Hives? I think I covered a little bit of that earlier, but it was really this idea of connecting with the bees. And so you know, anybody who has a day job knows that when they come home at night, they want to go and see their bees, because you love it. You just, you love this the sensation that you get working with your bees and seeing with your bees, um, seeing your bees. So part of why was, you know, do we have to leave that behind when we go into our day job? Um, why not have it available on our phones? And so you know, that was sort of one of the, the basic reasons. It's like, can we have this connection that we feel this sort of experience of being a beekeeper and, you know, the, the joy that that brings us, that can we take that with us? And so my answer to that question is is yes. Um, <laughs> by being able to bring this up, I'm just in the app right now. You can see, um, not sure if you can see that signal well enough, or just scroll up there. You can see there's there's one of the hives that we have, and it's got that nice um, nice orientation spike today. And I can see that not only that hive, but I can actually view what that hive was doing. So I know that you can't quite see this as well as I can, but um, being able to see my bees, that's, that's part of why. The other part of why is that, you know, the bees need our help. Um, if people who have a background in, in sort of healthcare and data and medical robotics, um, you know, as, as people with that background, our team just sort of looked at this and thought, we can help. We, we can actually build systems like you have in healthcare um, that can help beekeepers, you know, like us and like others with this problem of what's happening to my bees? When do they go from healthy to unhealthy? Um, so we thought somebody needs to do something about this. We're really well suited to work on this. We have a passion for it. So that's part of why. <laughs> and, you know, we've maintained our passion for it. You know, we did a Santa Barbara startup weekend in 2014, really kicked the project off. and we've just continually um, increased our enthusiasm for this whole concept and seeing the results, uh, we're, we're very much driven to keep going. Can the data be exported? 
Uh, right now, we don't provide an out of off the shelf sort of export capability, but it is on our roadmap. Um, we love the idea of people collaborating, um, looking at the data. We're trying to build as many of the tools as we can inside Eisenhire, so you're able to really do the things that you might want to do inside the device and, and inside the platform. Um, but yeah, on our roadmap, um, if you want to reach out to us specifically, if you have any sort of, you know, if you're a researcher and you, you're at a university um, studying some aspect of bee health, um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we can absolutely, you know, develop a, you know, form some sort of relationship where we can help you get the data that you need. And so we'd love to, we'd love to collaborate that way. Um, so yes, we, we can do that. Right now, it's not just something that you press the button and it all comes out. But if you're a researcher and or you know you've got some great reason to be doing that, we'd love to hear from you. What types of diagnostic uses do we foresee in the future? Well, our current state is actually very exciting. As human beings, we're very well suited to to see patterns, and so what we're starting to see as a, a beekeeper is that you know that pattern is very different to that orientation pattern. And it turned out that when I went and checked in my backyard, I saw that a swarm had in fact left the hive. So for the future, what we want to do is not only be able to recognize that as beekeepers, but train the computer system to be able to recognize that. So when you have the capability for your alert, your eyes and hives alert to tell you, you know, your hive is swarming right now, and we're, we're basically there today, which is pretty exciting. Um, that's one of the things that, that we're going to be doing as a diagnostic, um, other diagnostics, you know, we've we've seen uh, different kinds of um, sort of bee health issues. So, you know, we've monitored hives that have varroa issues. We've monitored hives um, now locally that may have some form of fowl brood. And so, looking at the the pattern, um, we want to be focusing ourselves around how can we really see like what kinds of patterns can we show somebody or recognize with the computer that might tell you that you know, not only something is wrong, but here's maybe what you should be looking for. Like this activity pattern might be um, pretty closely correlated with a small hive beetle infestation, or this one might be um, you know, varroa levels. So you can imagine brood um, translating into orientation activity. That one might have a pretty close correlation with varroa. Um, but you know, we're, we're, we're very keen to keep measuring everything we can and asking the question of, you know, what are the bees telling us? So we're expecting for beekeepers to, you know, continue to inspect their hives like we do and, and help us say, you know, here's the pattern that I saw that was weird. And when I inspected my hive, it turned out to be this. So that's really where we see um, the collaboration as a community of beekeepers uh, really coming in and and helping us collectively figure out, you know, what are the things that we can monitor? What should we be trying to diagnose? Um, a couple more great questions that come in. Um, what does it mean to see the spike on the graph? <laughs> um, so that's the orientation activity in a healthy hive. Um, it's basically where a bee uh, is, you know, the queen lays an egg, the egg hatches, turns into a larvae. Um, nurse bees will be feeding that larvae. Um, when that larvae then turns, sort of pupates and becomes a, a baby bee, it'll then like hatch, come out into the hive and start feeding other larvae. And then after it's done, it's sort of its tour inside the hive, it'll sort of graduate and become a field bee, um, where its job now is to go out and collect nectar and pollen and propolis and water and, and other things. So the very first flight that that bee takes when it's becoming a field bee is what we call the orientation flight. And that's where it's hovering in front of the hive um, and it stays there for a little bit longer. That's why we see that spike. We're actually measuring the number of bees per second flying in front of the hive. So we call that the, the bees per second metric or beeps. Um, we'll see if that catches on. But uh, what you're seeing there is orientation activity um, of a, a baby bee effectively learning how to fly. So it's kind of cool and poetic, but that's actually what that signal means. Um, do we have an API to get data from our database? See, there's an awesome technical sort of thread to this, uh, this series. Um, again, that's a roadmap thing for us. Um, we're pretty excited about the idea of collaborating with um, you know, university institutions and other people who are interested in this project. So um, 
we'd probably do that as part of a program. It's not something that off the shelf we're doing right now, um, but we have been playing around and tinkering with how to do that. And, um, it's certainly something that we, we do consider to be um, a roadmap item. Uh, can eyes and hives predict a hive's spiciness or if bees are Africanized? That's a great question. Um, so we'd love to actually measure that. Right now, honestly, we don't have the data for that. Uh, we haven't had an Africanized hive that we've been able to measure and really quantify its activity. Um, the hive there in the, uh, in the corner um, is certainly spicier than my other hives. Um, I love being able to you know, inspect my hives sometimes without a bunch of protective gear, particularly when I'm working on the, the nucleus hives here. Um, but that corner hive is, is a little bit more uh, defensive than the others, so I'll usually put on the veil and give it a, a couple of puffs of smoke before even getting near it. Um, its activity has looked fairly similar to the others so far. So uh, again, it's not a truly Africanized colony. Um, we'd love to answer that question. And if somebody has an Africanized colony and they want to set up a device, and, and, and you know, we'd love to help them run that study. That sounds like a really cool research project. OK. Um, what do you see the future of this technology? That's a great question. So what we've built is what we call in-field video analytics. And the idea here is that um, this is a human perception task. So we're kind of asking the robot, the little bots, to count bees flying in front of the hive. We know that that gives us a sense and a, an actual you know, piece of data and a metric around hive health. The future for us for this is um, you know, not only what can we measure for the hive health, what can we do when we have a massive data set where we're comparing like here's, like you can see two hives next to each other, sorry, I'm pointing and looking the other way. So there's one hive, there's another hive. When we have that data set of both of those hives, we can do sort of a cross comparison. We can see that this one hive which is healthy, this other hive which is not, um, and there's no difference between the weather conditions, for example, of those two hives. The only difference is the bees. Our future for this platform is actually being able to look at you know, many thousands of beehives across the world, across different environments, for a beekeeper to be able to look at their own hive, but then see a population of other beehives that are sort of um, like their own hive. And so then you get a much better sort of level of clarity around, you know, what are my bees doing and what's normal? So really the, the immediate term future of this technology is we've brought big data and big data healthcare to beekeeping. And in particular, we're trying to answer the question of how can we know that our hives are healthy and how can we help keep the bees alive? And yeah, this is really our, our roadmap for that. There's all kinds of really exciting algorithm work that, that we're pretty, you know, that keeps us motivated um, to be done. And there's really a lot of collaboration. We see this, this technology and this platform being a, an education tool, it's sort of education, it's collaboration, and it's, it's been able to sort of enable decision support for beekeepers. So that's, that's sort of where this technology generally is going. We're going to get better and better at doing what we currently do now, and we're going to enable more people to be able to get better insights, and, and ultimately we think sort of help people solve, you know, the mysteries of colony collapse and um, you know, help their own community be successful beekeepers, and hopefully even just sharing the joy of bees. You know, um, there aren't that many beekeepers around. We're a pretty rare breed, and <laughs> we want to do everything we can to, you know, to help people um, share share the passion. Um, what is the status of a solar powered model um, for use in more remote locations? Great question. Um, behind us, actually, sort of behind the camera here. We do have a solar powered uh, sort of a solar system. And so we haven't brought that out as a product, but we, we've got many customers who are now running their eyes and highest devices on solar. Um, we're going to share a blog post around how you can build your own. And we're developing sort of a, you know, a, a, basically a product where you can buy that if you wish. So if you don't want to do all the, the engineering labor hours that you know, we love doing, um, you can buy that product from us if you wish. So uh, we're expecting to be able to bring out that solution by the end of the year. Um, and if somebody has a project right now, um, we're, we are doing one-offs for people and helping them get set up and running. So um, 
solar powered is absolutely in line with our values. We love the idea that we can have a device which is helping sustainable agriculture. Um, we're going to be engineering it more sustainably and using renewable energy to power the system. Um, yeah, that's a good fit. We love that. <laughs> um, another question, what other services do we integrate with? Um, that's an interesting question. Right now, um, we just uh, may be live right now, may not be, but we're trying to enable people to be able to share um, some of the videos that they find exciting. So we just linked in with Facebook. Um, so now, or at least we'll be pressing the go live button in the next few days. Um, but you'll be able to click a button and share your, your beehive video on Facebook and Twitter. Um, part of that is just sort of creating awareness and having a bit of fun. Um, future state for us is connecting with, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not only getting your app notifications on your phone, but it's being able to um, perhaps connect in with other sort of beekeeping networks. So if you're a nonprofit beekeeping association, um, you know, and you've got a website where you want a, a live feed of your hives, for example, um, those are some of the, the services, um, sort of that sort of how do we get B video and data outside of uh, the platform? Um, we're actively working on that at the moment. So if you're interested in that, um, you know, let us know and we'll be happy to share some more details. Um, okay, well, we're coming up on time. I'm very excited about this. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, give a couple more moments to, if you want to throw them into the say something spot. Um, let me just check that again. Actually, I just noticed my other device was offline. Let me, uh, I'm just going to check here on whether or not we got any more questions. OK, great. I see. Uh, yep. OK. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Appreciate your uh, support there and letting us know that things are going well. Um, so yeah, I think that's, uh, I think those are most of the questions that we got. And it's been a real pleasure being able to share our story, um, what excites us. Um, I wanted to sort of show one more thing on the screen share before we close out, because I get to have a lot of fun here, sort of, you know, sitting and giving these presentations. Um, but I wanted to make sure that people know that we have this amazing team of people um, that are involved with this project and dedicate countless hours to making it happen. Um, there's actually a couple more on here. Um, James Knuse, we, we, we really appreciate your help too. You should be on the screen. Um, but you can see here, you know, between John, Nick, Scott, Eric, Nate, Dennis, Paul, Diana, um, you know, we, we really have an amazing team here. And, you know, this, this whole project, um, it, it certainly wouldn't have been possible uh, without, you know, the level of support and, and mentoring and encouragement that we've got from our community and um, the team that we've been able to build up. So, you know, I, I very much appreciate the people that are involved with the, with the project. And it's just a real pleasure to be able to share what we're doing and, and why this is important to us. So <laughs> have I been stung today? I haven't yet. I haven't got my, uh, my, uh, uh, my venom ther therapy yet, my appy therapy. But maybe I'll inspect one of those new hives back there for you, Paul, and, and we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, on that note, um, really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you for tuning in. We, we really, uh, yeah, this is wonderful. We'd love to do this again. We'll probably send out a couple of questions and find out if anybody wants to tune in again. Um, yeah, we want to do this. We want to be able to share guest speakers and cool and exciting things that are happening in sort of beekeeping science world. So um, once again, thanks everybody for tuning in. It's been a real pleasure. Um, this is the Eyes and Hives Apiary um, on behalf of the Keltronics team and um, I guess the bees here. Um, wanted to thank you for your time and we're looking forward to doing this again. Um, so thank you very much and uh, this will be up online hopefully in the next uh, few hours on YouTube if you missed out or you want to share it with a friend. So thanks again and uh, we'll sign it out. All right, thanks again. Bye-bye.